Right. Thanks, David. Wow, this is a great turnout for uh, an afternoon on Salt Spring. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming uh, to the Salt Spring uh, Forum and uh, the Driftwood, and of course the high school for sponsoring this. And uh, greetings to my fellow uh, candidates. Uh, my name is Gary Holman. I have lived on Salt Spring for 24 years down at the South End near Ruckle Park. Um, I'm an, an economist by background, worked for 25 years as a consulting economist, uh, including the uh, fisheries component of the Nishka Treaty, and on about a dozen land use plans throughout British Columbia, where the NDP doubled parkland. I served as Salt Springs uh, Capital Regional District Director for six years, started the bus system on Salt Spring, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I've also served on the boards of uh, the Land Conservancy of BC and the Salt Spring Island. Conservancy. I'm running in this election as I did in 2009 to change the provincial government in this province, Good. which in my view uh, has lost its way, has lost sight of the, of the public interest. And in 2009, I came within 1% of, of winning this seat for the NDP, came within 260 votes of a long-standing uh, Liberal cabinet minister, Murray Cole, who's, who's now retired. It's, it's so important that we change the channel at the provincial level in, in so many different respects and the questions that you ask will reveal the kinds of policies, that the platform that the NDP is going to be putting forward and how it differs from the other parties. But I'm very, very proud of the platform we've put together. It's balanced and it's going to result in benefits for British Columbians uh, from all income groups, all ages. It will protect the environment better. It will, uh, it will enhance social justice in this province, and it will actually improve the economy. And as an economist, I strongly believe that if we protect our economy, if we help those who need help, if we support the vulnerable, it's not just the right thing to do, it's we're all better off. We're all better off as a community, as a society, our economy uh, will, will grow more strongly. And, you know, in the 1990s, you, you've heard probably myths about the NDP government in the 1990s. Our economy grew faster. Thank you, Gary. Days. Thank you. <laughs> Stephen, you're up. Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Roberts and I'm your BC Liberal candidate this election. Uh, it's great to be here, it's great to see this fantastic turnout, and thank you in particular today for the Students' Council of the Gulf Island Secondary School for sponsoring this event. It's great to see that you are engaged as a student population and it's actually your world to inherit, so you uh, are um, congratulated for being involved today. I grew up here on Salt Spring myself. I was born in Sydney, but when I was one, my parents moved over. My parents, uh, my mother worked at the Lady Minto Hospital as a nurse. My father was on the Long Harbour Ferry. So I know a little bit about this island. My older brothers and sisters were at the high school when it was uh, located where the middle school is now, up on the hill. I attended Salt Spring Elementary, which is the same building you see over there, and it looked pretty much exactly the same when I was a kid there. I'm uh, from a family of six, three brothers, three sisters. We had a a fantastic life here on Salt Spring, and I can appreciate what uh, you young people here today enjoy about this great island and those people who have come since also have come here to enjoy. But in this election, we face a stark choice. We have to decide ourselves as electors whether or not we're going to embrace some of the opportunities that British Columbia has or whether we're going to say no to just about every development project that's out there. We can actually say yes. We can embrace environmental sustainability and technology, and we can challenge our young people to study and go to university, to become engineers, to become technicians, to become the people that are going to make British Columbia a world leader in environmental stewardship. We can learn how to make things work environmentally. We can do it in a friendly way. We can build some of those pipelines that we need to be prosperous. We can get our resources out to our markets in Asia, where I spent much of my career in finance. And we can become a world leader, ensuring that British Columbia is, prosper is prosperous going into the future. And it's going to be up to you guys to decide that. Do you want to embrace that? Do you want to take your creativity, your genius, your ability, your intelligence, and the things you're going to learn at university after you finish at school here, do you want to take those and put them to work for British Columbians? Building a better province. Not saying no to everything that comes up, but finding a better way. Finding a better solution. 
I'm back here now because this is a fantastic place to live. Thus far, we've ensured the province is prosperous and we've protected our environment with things like the carbon tax. We have to keep doing those things. A BC Liberal government is going to keep doing those things. Thanks for being here with me today and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, next up is Adam, but he has given me his bio, so I will uh, just tell you who he is. He's a 37-year-old member of the Tsarklip First Nation and was raised on the reserve in Brentwood Bay. He is married to Emily. They have two small children, five-year-old Silas Wolf and 11-month-old Ella Rose. Adam was a two-term Central Sanitary Councillor until he resigned in January to run the provincial election. He's a communications professional and worked on Elizabeth May's communications team. He is a partner in three small businesses and understands the challenges of local entrepreneurs. Okay, Adam. Good afternoon. Two years ago, we elected Elizabeth May. Today, two years ago today. As we have seen every day since, Greens have had an important place in our democracy. We are the democratic conscience. I'm proud to be a part of a positive political movement that is growing in our region and that is needed for our planet. On the Saanich Peninsula, in Greater Victoria, Salt Spring, the Southern Gulf Islands, we have grown a grassroots support to govern differently. We are poised to elect the next generation, but we cannot fall back to the last generation's voting strategies. We celebrated together when Mr. Dix broke from his principled stance on Kinder Morgan last week to state that Metro Vancouver was not going to become a major oil exporting port. We cheered when he stated that ninefold increases of tanker traffic is not in our interest. The Greens were an important factor in his change in principle. The fact that Greens continue pulling high in Saanich North and the Islands and Oak Bay Gordon Head the threat of the Greens breaking the monopoly on Vancouver Island has inspired that change. But our job is not done. Yes. All we have is an NDP campaign promise, which is precisely why we need to elect Greens into that legislature on May 14th. Our top-down parties control their MLAs. Their discussions are held behind closed doors. Greens can ensure that government is account held to account in public. What about the other environmental, social, and economic challenges that face our times? Who's going to publicly push government to act on fish farms before 2020? We're going to have to wait for the answer. You're out of time. Thank you. <laughs> We've already turned the volume down. We have turned the volume down. Maybe too low. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to come. My name is Scott McEachern. Um, I'm the independent candidate for the Sandwich North and the Islands. I am no different than all of you people out here. I get up very early in the morning, I go to work, and at the end of the day, and, and my bills come in, I try to make all the ends meet. The problem that we have seen with the British Columbia governments in the past many, many moons is once they get in there, your voices all go quiet, all go silent and they never want to hear from us ever again until four years and then they're back on this stage and they give this little speech. I'm here to represent you, all of you. When I go out there, I want to hear the issues that you have, not what these candidates have, what you people have, because it's important. As we move forward, there is so much going on that people up here just lose what's going out there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to listen to you. I have two ears and I have a mouth. It's also a time right now for the independent parties to go places. Right now there's 35 independents running in 34 ridings. Vicki Huntington made a big statement four years ago when she beat out Wally Opo. And she went into, into the parliament and she started to make changes. There was a couple of MDPs and a couple uh, liberals that switched over as independent candidates. And they're also making statements out there. Things can really make changes. I believe, ideally, the best thing that could happen to British Columbia right now is we go into a minority government, not a majority. So with your support on May the 14th, if 
If you let me, I will become your ears and your mouth. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I would just like to acknowledge the sponsors of this event, uh, which is the Salt Spring Forum, 